that the German army was using methamphetamine. And it, it's, it's another interesting story how that came about because a professor called uh, Ranke, he was the head of the uh, F Institute for Defense Physiology of the German army. And basically his job was to enhance the fighting capability of the soldier. So he was researching in 38, how can we combat fatigue? Because he said, not the Russians are our biggest enemy, not the British, not even the French, you know, our biggest enemy is fatigue because you get tired in the evening, you fight the whole day and then you need to sleep. What a, what a waste, you know, that's not good. We have, he was looking for a way to come to, to beat this enemy. Uh, sleep. You know? And then when Pavitin came onto the market, he started reading uh, studies done by universities and they very clearly show that on meth, uh, and I think this is an experience that people who have used meth probably would sign, you know, you, you don't sleep as much, you know, it keeps you awake because all your dopamine is released. So your brain is basically in a fight or flight mode, like your methamphetamine makes you extremely alert over a very long period of time. And then at, at one point, obviously you drop down and you get the urge to take it again. This is how the addiction works. But he was not, in, he was not you know, looking at addiction problems. He was just looking at, does it really work to keep a soldier awake maybe for two hours longer on the battlefield? Because there's this saying from Napoleonic times, the last 15 minutes in a battle, that that's the decisive 15 minutes, like who's, who wins in the end wins, you know? Right. So if you have a if you have something that keeps your men awake for longer than the enemy has, then you have a, a decisive advantage. So he made tests. Um, I don't know. I, I I have like there's photos of it uh, in my book Blitzed where you see like the young medical officers. Like he was working in a in an institution that was breeding medical officers for the German army. So he gave these young guys placebo, methamphetamine, coffee, just to check, check and like, can they sustain longer on meth? And they could, they could actually, they were more active. Like these tests started at 8 p.m. and went until 10 a.m. And the meth people, like, they were awake the whole night, you know, they were filling out, you know, they he had tests, like you had to draw things or repeat orders or like solve mathematical questions. And the math people were like going at it until 10 a.m. And then some said, and now we want to go out. Like now then they wanted to party. Uh, while the caffeine people, um, I don't know if we can see that image. It's kind of funny. Can you pull that up? Yeah, I'm not sure which image it is. Uh, like the you know, your mic's on, on Jamie. I'm just not sure which one it is. I'm looking at, it's just, it's a lot of images in their own. Uh, go, yeah, yeah, this one. So these guys are all messed up. Well, you see, like, going up, maybe. You see, like, the S. Or like another but the day. guy in the back though that's a P, his head is down. I think See him in the far right? I think he's solving a... Yeah, he might be studying yeah. things. Well, in any case, maybe go one picture down. Yeah, that one. That, like, that's how, that's how the, the test like he did. So he's, he saw that uh, with, if you take two times uh, zero, six milligrams of pavitine, uh, on the right there, that black bar, they, people, they, they don't show any fatigue at all. He basically came to the conclusion, it does work. It yeah. does keep you awake. And he also found out something, which is I think is kind of funny. He, he found out that on meth, you 
are less capable of solving h- higher complex higher complex questions. So math keeps you up, but it makes you a little bit dumber. Oh. Like things that are really that demand like abstract, a lo- very abstract thinking, or you know, h- you know, more complex you know things. You're not better on math. Is it because math sort of rushes you to come to yeah, a conclusion? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And also you feel too good about yourself. So yeah. you that self-criticism is lowered. Right, right. And he concluded that this is perfect for the German soldier. It makes um. you awake longer and it makes you a little bit more stupid. Because wow. a soldier just needs to follow orders. Right. He just needs to shoot for a long time, you know. Right, right. And... Um, so he, he he got all excited about it. This was in 38. His last test he did was in 39. Then Germany was about to invade Poland, September 1st, 1939, beginning of World War II. And he said to his, you know, his superior was in America, it's called the Surgeon General. In German, that's a different name, but the highest medical guy in the army who, you know, determines basically at, at the end of the day what is given to the soldiers. So he wrote to his boss, and this was kind of an old school guy, the boss, like he was still from the First World War and he read the reports and he's like, why well, we need to use a chemical drug to enhance the perf-. Like he didn't get it basically. So he said, we're not using this uh, in, the, in the attack on Poland. And then Ranke, uh, the professor, really believed in meth and I, wrote, I read his war diary. Like every officer was required to write like a diary during the war. And in his war diary, you can clearly see that he himself became addicted to, to meth. Wow. Like he writes about it, it's so great. I don't even understand how I could even do a, a day at the office without meth. <laughs> Why is not everyone taking it? But then like a few months later, it's like, I feel very depressed this morning. Even the pavitin I'm using does not help me anymore against my depression. Oh. Like he didn't understand that this was actually the problem. So that he, he had, was becoming addicted himself. And he needed higher and higher dosages. He did. Yeah. yeah, and he became quite unhinged. But he was like the meth guy of the German army. But he was still <laughs> doing you know, his job. And um, he asked the um, medical officers in the field in Poland. Poland was beaten by Germany within a few days, actually, I think 17 days or something. It was a quick... A quick victory, actually quite surprising that it was so quick, but it, it happened so quick. And a lot of medical officers wrote back to him that pavitin was actually quite helpful. It, they said things like, and I studied all these uh, reports for Blitz, and I quote, I'm quoting some of them in Blitz, like, it really helped our soldiers achieve their work, lo- like do their workload, which was basically killing or you know, invading a foreign country. So Ranga again was very excited, and he 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 said to his to the Surgeon General, we, because then after the successful campaign against Poland, it was now going against the West, France, the old enemy of Germany. Like we had had a war, uh, 1865, Germany won, and then in World War One, Germany lost, and now Hitler wanted like the revenge. You know, now we have the the third one. We're going to win the third one, but his high command was saying, let's please not do it because the French army, La Grande Armée, was supposed to be the best army in the world at the time, in, in the late 30s, early 40s. Like They were really proud of their army, the French, and it, I mean, it wasn't good, but they, everyone thought it's good. And they also had an ally, which was very powerful, Great Britain, you know, the world's empire, you know. Those, so these two powers, to attack from Germany, these two powers was considered insane by the high command. Like, they thought Hitler is just a lunatic, and Hitler wanted to attack the West already in November 1939. Like Poland was beaten. The, the, the German military actually needed a lot of repairs because even in a successful campaign, you lose a lot of machinery, you lose a lot of people. You know, so everyone said, let's not do it. Let's just you know, get back on track and, and, and develop a, a strategy which we, we, with which we can win against the West because they knew there is no strategy. Because that was exactly what happened in, the, in, in World War I. Germany attacked from the north of Belgium and there was a stalemate and then in the end Germany lost because Germany is one country and it cannot win against you know, so many countries. So they, they said it's not going to work, you know. And, but Hitler was very stubborn and he said it will work, but they blocked him. There was even a, a coup attempt in uh, November 39 against him, which failed. And then he had a breakfast meeting, uh, February 17th, 1940, three kind of revolutionary tank generals 
von Mahnstein, Guderian and Rommel, Rommel later becoming very famous tank general, came to Hitler in Berlin in the, in the Reich Chancellery and said, we have a plan. We know it's going to work. We can beat them because we will not use the tanks as everyone expects us to use the tanks, which is kind of more in the back, kind of backing up the infantry and you know, being like the backup guys, like the heavy guys in the back. Like we will use the tanks in the front and make the tanks kind of overrun the enemy. And Hitler's like, whoa, this is a crazy thought. He loved crazy thoughts. So he's like, this is a good thought, but how, where are we going to do it? And they said, we're going to do it in an area. Um, and also, I also sent an image. I don't know if we need it, but it's, a, it's, a, it's interesting. They decided on an area, which is the Aden Mountains. And the Aden Mountains is a mountain range in Belgium which is exactly between the north of Belgium, where the Western allies were massing their defense forces, and France, where the French also had a heavy defense. But the, in this mountainous terrain, it wasn't heavily fortified. So they said, we're going to go through the Ardennes Mountains within three days and three nights, but we can't stop at night. Because if we stop and kind of sleep at night, you know, they will know that we're there, and then they will come from the north and the south, and the pincer movement destroy our advance. So we have to you know, not stop. And within three days and three nights, we have to reach through Belgium, the mountains, the Swiss, uh, sorry, the French border town of Sedan. We have to get there because then we will be faster because they will still be stuck in the north of Belgium. Like we will be faster than them and we'll race through all the way to the uh, channel. And then we will be in the back of them and destroy them. So we will have kind of surrounded them. This is what Churchill later called the sickle cut 